Okay, folks, we're going to create a artificial intelligence in Unreal to chase us around. In order to do this, you need to open either the third person template or the top down template. You essentially need a template where there is a body and we're going to use a similar body for our enemy. If you try to do this in the first person template, because the first person template is just a collision volume with arms and there's no actual body on it, you won't be able to make a visible enemy. Uh, I guess you could if you wanted just arms, but that's why we're going to have to use the third person template. So go ahead and open the third person template or open the top down and follow along. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to click in the content browser. And if you don't have a content browser, you're going to want to go up to window and content browser and turn on content browser one. And once you have that content browser, you're going to want to click add blueprint class. The type of blueprint class, the type of blueprint class that we're going to be creating is of type character. And once I do that, it will prompt me to give it a new name. I always like to call my blueprints BP for blueprint. In this case, we're going to be creating an enemy artificial intelligence. Once you've created that, go ahead and double click it, which will open it up. And you can see that it defaults to being just a capsule. And this is a collision capsule. So there is no body yet. So that will be the first thing that we do. Over here on the left under components, we're going to select mesh. And then over here on the details pane of our mesh component, we are going to add a new skeletal mesh. I can pop that open. I'm going to use Quinn. You can go ahead and use Manny if you want, which is the, the male manic Quinn, but I'm going to use the female manic Quinn named Quinn. This will pop in and the zero zero will be at the feet of the character, which doesn't jive with where our capsule is. So I like to then move our mannequin down by entering negative 85. And I also rotate it to the right so it meshes with some of our other animations that we're going to be using. Okay, once you have these two things set up, your mesh is now done and we will move on to adding the next component. The next component can be added under components by clicking the add button. And we're going to be adding the sensing, pawn sensing. So if I type sense, it'll show up and I can select pawn sensing. The peripheral vision angle on this is typically, I thought it was 100, but I guess it's, it's 90. Um, theoretically, 90 is correct for humans, but I like to decrease this just a little bit. I'm used to thinking about things a little bit closer to um, 74 degrees, but in this case, I'm just going to decrease it a little bit to, to 80, just so that it, it's a little bit of a forward looking, and I'm going to leave it at that. Once we have completed that, we have the components we need. We've made the changes in the details that we need, and we're going to move on to the event graph. In the event graph, we're going to start programming some of the movements that allow the AI to understand where a person is and where it starts following that person. So you have your typical red functions here, and we're going to choose to create a new function down here. So by right clicking in nowhere, we are going to add a function called on C pawn. Now I have had some issues where this hasn't popped up as easily as this when I'm searching for it. Uh, if it's not popping up for you, Try making sure that you're selecting pawn sensing. Make sure your context, context sensitive is on. Um, on occasions, both of these things have been on and Unreal has not sensed that this is what I wanted. In that case, for some reason, selecting something else, coming back to pawn sensing and 
deselecting and reselecting context context sensitive has sometimes allowed this to pick up. Um, I've also found better luck by not saying the add on C pawn for some reason. I have had better results with just on C pawn. It seems a tiny bit unpredictable, but I have been able to get this to show up on all students' computers that have been having problems. So if it first it doesn't work, just try it again. So on C pawn means that this will be running when the pawn, when the AI is seeing something, seeing the player in this instance. Um, but we don't want to be calling this all the time. We really want to save this in a variable. So we are going to create a Boolean variable. I like to call it pawn C. And I drag that in and I say set pawn C. I connect these and I make sure that I click to set pawn C to true in my Boolean variable when it's sensed. The next item is I'm gonna create a custom event. So I'm gonna right click in nowhere and I'm gonna write custom and add custom event. Now, if any point I'm typing in one of these and I'm clicking on something that you can't find, the first step is to always scroll down to see if you can find it. The second might be to type in a little bit more detail. So I'm adding this custom event and this is going to be my follow player function. And once I have that custom event established, I can now drag this off and I can call it. So by typing call and call my new custom function. Okay. So when I see something, I'm going to set a variable saying that pawn C is true. And then I'm going to call my follow player action. And my follow player action is then going to do some other things. First thing is it's going to branch. And this branch is going to give me an opportunity to see if this variable is actually true. I'm going to pull this variable back in and say get pawn C, not setting, but I'm just, if I'm setting it here, at this point I'm saying, hey, what was that variable? Is it true or is it false? And if it's true, I'm going to drag this off. And what it's going to do is it's going to move to AI, sorry, AI move to. It's showing up there, but let me clarify that. AI move to, right here. Okay, here we have it. This is a little bit more involved. I have to just add a couple of things. So I need to pull this off and say self in order to get a reference to self self being the enemy intelligence. And then the target that it wants to follow, I'm gonna drag that off too. The target that it wants to follow is the player. So I'm going to get player character, right? Yes, get player character. There we go. Now again, there's a player index here, which means it could be searching for a specific character. I have not shown you how to do a multiplayer yet. I'm feeling like we're probably going to be either having you include AI in your game or include multiplayer. I'm a little worried that including both is gonna to get too complicated and too cumbersome. Okay, so we have everything set up here. We are calling this pawn sensing action when something is sensed and then we are following the player. We have a branch to check if we are still seeing the character and if it is true, the AI is moving towards it. Okay, let's see if we need anything else. I think that's good. We can compile this and save it. I'm gonna move that window out of the way and we can then drag that blueprint into the scene. If you drag it into the scene, the, the center point will 
be on the ground, but because it has collisions, it should snap up and pop into place. I like to position it very close to my start so I can test it very quickly. And I also like to make sure that it's facing away from me on the start so that I can check whether or not it's seeing me or how its peripheral vision is working essentially. Uh, now, before we test it, there is one additional thing, which is the AI will not know where it can walk unless I give it the information to map where it can walk. So we have to go over here to quickly add to the project. It's of type volume and it's nav mesh bounds volume. So it's the navigation and it's going to calculate the mesh for navigating. Let's try and grab this and move it somewhat. That's not working very well. Let's scale this up move it to where it looks like it is colliding with the entire level. That's kind of looking all right. I'm not going to worry about being too precise here because when I feel like I've got it pretty good, I'm going to make sure I'm clicking in the view and I'm going to hit P for preview. And all of the green is where it's calculating the nav mesh hitting and giving me a surface that the AI might be able to walk on. So I can just scale it. And I'm gonna scale it down so it doesn't think it can walk on the top of those walls. Wow, scaling it down a lot. So much so that I lost the, uh, the floor. Okay, there we go. This is looking good. Uh, it was mentioned in class that these blocks seem to be blocking the AI and maybe we don't want it to be blocked. So if I pull it up high enough, those blocks will just drop to the ground. But in the meantime, the AI will th understand that it can walk in those spaces. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and save all right now, just in case anything goes wrong. I'm gonna hit play and let's check if it starts following me. And sure enough, it's following me. And it understands that it can go up the ramp. It understands if I jump over here, that it can go down the ramp. In some cases, oh, and it also pushed that block out of the way. In some cases, it actually understands that it can just go off the ledge with me. And it's going to do something funny where it's actually going to push these blocks if I jump on them. If I move backwards to it, it'll stop pushing. But if I move away from it, it'll start pushing me again. Okay, so there you have it. We have a fundamental AI. It knows how to follow me around. Um, it's kind of smart, but it's not very smart. Uh, but it's been said that it's a little creepy uh, because it's not moving, it's not walking, it's just sort of floating like a poltergeist. So I'm going to stop here for this part of the video. We've set up the AI, and then the next video we will set up the animations to make this AI enemy look like it's walking towards us.